This week on The Point, Irrational Games creators of Bioshock, Bioshock Infinite, System Shock 2, SWAT 4 and Freedom Force are closing up shop, but the question remains, why? Yesterday, co-founder Ken Levine announced that he was closing Irrational Games, the studio that rose out of the ashes of Looking Glass Studios back in 1997, creators of many fondly remembered games across several platforms and genres. The reason? To focus on smaller, more entrepreneurial endeavors, a 15 or so person team that will concentrate on narrative-driven games for the core audience that are highly replayable. Surely not a decision anyone could take lightly. Closing a studio that's been your focus for 17 years, leaving friends and colleagues without work, and reneging the rights to a franchise you built from scratch. But it's one Mr. Levine has made, and it's a decision that has left many in the gaming community scratching their heads. So why? Ken Levine has achieved something few others have. In Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite, he crafted immersive worlds with interesting characters and rich fiction. Games which challenged our perceptions on race, society, religion, and much, much more. These weren't indie distractions either. These were blockbuster games which achieved widespread commercial success. However, in doing so, he did have to bend his knee to the whims of the mass market. These deep and engaging games were also first-person shooters in which you would lay waste to hundreds of people people, and the dichotomy this created was notable throughout. Levine is a storyteller. His prowess in this field recently landed him a job of scriptwriting the new Logan's Run movie. And you can see it in his games. For all the fun I had shooting people in Infinite, the pull of those games came from unraveling their secrets, reading the next chapter. And for many, the requirement to murder hundreds of people to do so was a suspension of disbelief too far. So, though he rose to the challenge, perhaps the burden of having to dilute his storytelling endeavours to ensure the mass market was appeased finally got to him. On top of that, there always seemed to be an uneasy relationship between Levine and the owners of the Bioshock IP 2K games, be it the naming and renaming of Irrational or the pushing of Bioshock 2 to the folks at 2K Marin. In any case, one of the most visionary developers of our day is stepping away from the mainstream gaming audience to focus on games for the core gamer. So what does this mean? Is this simply one man making a personal decision about his professional life? Is this indicative of the growing number of core gamers? Does it tell us something about the creative restrictions required to make games for the mass market? Or did he see that guy lose his mind over Flappy Birds and say, yeah, that, that sounds about right? We don't know, and perhaps it's a mixture of all these things, but in any case, we're losing a studio that's made some wonderful games, not just Bioshock. The incredible sequel to System Shock which itself became one of the most influential first-person shooters of the late 90s. The insanely fun and witty tactical role-playing game Freedom Force, inspired by the Silver Age of comic books, and of course its sequel, Freedom Force vs. the Third Reich. The high-flying fun-as-hell multiplayer of Tribe's Vengeance, the outrageously good and oft-forgotten first-person rebirth of the SWAT series that not only lived up to its predecessors, but surpassed them. And of course, Bioshock, Rapture, Atlas, Would You Kindly, Splicers, Bathospheres, The Big Daddies, and Little Sisters, a game that changed how we thought about story in first-person shooters. And when they were asked to strike gold a second time, a new city arose from the depths. Columbia, a beautiful floating slice of Americana that gave us Elizabeth, Comstock, Booker DeWitt, and some of the most memorable moments of recent gaming memory. Over their 17-year tenure, the women and men at Irrational Games have bestowed upon us some of the most fun, interesting, and engaging experiences our medium has ever seen. And they did so with a spirit of innovation that often challenged the way we expected games to be made, the way things were meant to be. In yesterday's statement, Levine said, To meet the challenge ahead, I need to refocus my energy on a smaller team with a flatter structure and a more direct relationship with gamers. In many ways, it will be returned to how we started, a small team making games for the core gaming audience. If those games are anything like what we have expected from Ken Levine and his team, then I look forward to playing them. Godspeed, Irrational Games. Thanks for the memories.